This presentation is designed to inform the ACME University Board of Trustees towards new innovation related to e-learning. Recognizing that the institution is behind the trend of e-learning, through research, informative material will be provided to discuss plans how to implement technology-based initiatives. Understanding the importance of preserving the core values of traditional higher education will remain the foundation. Though the design plan will transform the university by increasing productivity while stemming costs associated with technology-based initiatives that will benefit all stakeholders. First, I will begin with three traditional methods that must remain within online learning, followed by examples of how to include such within the new strategic plan by Asha Pandey. Next, I will talk about William Bowen's point of view from his book, Higher Education in the Digital Age in how this approach can be implemented and highly beneficial. Last, I will share feedback from the e-learning task force at Western University, which has begun the process of embracing online learning as a part of their educational future. The exploration will include the benefits and opportunities related to this aspect of higher education. The concerns with implementing e-learning and recommendations on how implement an online program. With the trends changing in education and technology, there is a need for traditional methods of teaching to change as well. However, there are aspects related to the traditional methods that are important to continue in the classroom environment too. Cultivating a classroom setting that incorporates traditional methods, innovative methods, along with technological resources will better prepare students for work in the real world. The three aspects of traditional education that should remain intact are with consideration to cost-effectiveness are behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. These designs are the foundation to attracting, maintaining, and understanding student needs. When applied to online learning, there are great strengths in remaining grounded in these traditional aspects of education. With the understanding that cognitive, emotional, environmental, and prior experiences are influential factors of learning, Educators must determine the right teaching method. In doing so, learning will be more effective, more meaningful, and engage all different groups of learners. First, behaviorism can be established through teacher-to-student observation. By recognizing changes in behavior patterns, new patterns should be understood. Further, every learner still relies on instructor knowledge to enhance the learning experience. Therefore, with this traditional method, adequate feedback is essential. Next, cognitivism relies on behavior changes by subsequent growth in individual intellectual skills. Here, thought mechanisms within the learner are examined and class content will be addressed respectively grouped into appropriate subject matter. Last, constructivism focuses on the conditions by which proficiency is shaped. This method centers on build skills, obtainment of those abilities, and the acquisition of personal practices. The following are example of how e-learning can be used will remaining grounded in the three traditional methods. As educators, to recognize the use of one theory is not a best practice to enhance student learning, must be understood. The need to incorporate multiple teaching methods is necessary to reach all students and produce the best learning outcomes possible. The traditional methods behind behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism are strong practices, which are cost-effective. As education evolves, there is a need to stay grounded in these theories. Yet, implementing additional strategies that blend technology into conventional teaching schemes will generate higher student learning. Bowen discusses the importance of institutions providing quality education and online learning programs. The one-size-fits-all approach will lead students and organizations towards a path of destruction. In order for online education to be successful, institutions must understand what abilities students need while willingly developing effective online instruction. Through focus on building student skill sets within diverse settings, students will be afforded heightened opportunities to become employable. Bowen states, we must believe in education as an engine of social mobility and act on that behalf. Further, higher education institutions need to carefully analyze and assess cost effectiveness. Obviously cost is an issue. However, ACME University must not lose sight of the need to teach all students embracing individual needs. With this new approach, ACME will focus on closing the gap between those who have and those who have not within our society. Bowen also notes one of the main concerns that many higher education institutions struggle to overcome 
is whether or not online learning is the single solution to fixing the cost disease. As professionals, I am sure that we understand there is no one best solution. However, online learning can be incorporated within education as a pertinent tool in cost relief. Yes, there will be programs that are successful. There will also be programs that will fail. However, this institution needs to make innovative efforts to explore a more practical approach towards sustainability. The development of system-wide approaches should remain grounded in the virtues of this institution. Implementing such approaches will take commitment, patience, and most importantly, assessments of outcomes. Online systems have a great potential, but require that all stakeholders play a role in responsibility and accountability measures. The Western Network for Digital Education and Research Task Force comprised itself of researchers, staff, instructors, graduate students, postdoctor students, archivists, and librarians. All involved parties were those who sought to better understand the impacts of new technologies upon education. In using e-learning, the goal was to nurture innovation in education and to evaluate the efficiency and influence of instructional technology. With the understanding that online learning is just a small part of their strategic plan, the general understanding is the necessity behind its implementation. Concerning faculty is the importance of engagement, acknowledging that with the new model of e-learning, the institution must ensure a dynamic and positive engagement within. In order for instructors to provide students with the best experience, effective pathological practices along with the necessary tools must be provided. Additionally, it is imperative that instructors gain a sense of ownership in the creation of these courses. In the planning process of online courses, student input is also imperative. One way to gain student input could be inviting students to workshops or symposiums where open communications are encouraged. I believe that we all understand that online learning is not an appropriate avenue of education for all learners. However, to strengthen and build such a student base, ACME University could offer orientation materials for students that would include guidelines for online learning. Suggestions for time management, the importance of taking ownership of one's education, and discussion of active engagement practices. The overall advantages of e-learning positively affect all stakeholders de grants on global, which is a striving force in e-training discusses that e-learning today is cost and time efficient. This type of education is available anytime and provides fast and effective training. A learner has the potential to reduce the frustration caused by conventional training methods. Especially where specialized subjects are concerned. Just consider with conventional training there's the constant issue of matching the dates and times of courses with daily schedules. E-learning is a solution offering education without taking time away from home or work. Also, costs will be cut as travel and expenses do not apply. The overall cost of e-learning courses are generally much less than that of a traditional classroom course. The benefits and attributes of e-learning today within a well-structured course include effective training and evaluation, consistent standard presentation, reduced time, reduced cost, fast and flexible, individual group training, reinforcement of learning, and realistic simulations and scenarios. In particular, regarding students as this board goes through the planning stages, Please keep the following in mind, anywhere. Anytime online courses can be taken in multiple settings and are available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week to better accommodate busy schedules. Training can take place on the road or any other place there is an internet accessible computer. Students learn what they really need to learn. Learners will have the option to select learning materials that meet their level of knowledge and interest. Students can learn at their own pace. When students are in a lecture setting, he or she must adapt to the rhythm of the class. There's also the opportunity to move ahead or ask questions in specific areas that to certain people seem clear and to others not. Of course when the student is in control of the pace of the lesson via the internet he or she can do as desires. Students may skip ahead, return backwards, stop the lesson, and gain access to online material to gain a proper understanding of the content. It's possible to view three consecutive lectures at the same time so it saves time and money. It's also possible to view just certain sections of lectures. It is important to recognize that implementing these innovative changes will not happen overnight. The development of online courses requires time and efforts towards management, planning, budgeting, 
as we embark on this journey together and put into place what we feel will be the most innovative and well-constructed e-learning strategic plan. Collaborative efforts will heighten overall success of this university.